And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Ash Thresh. So this deck, uh, this is a donation deck. That's what the two Ds up here mean. So this was a viewer submitted deck. This is very similar to Ash Harrowing, which we played yesterday, which was uh, a good deck. Except for we don't really have, we don't have Harrowing at the top end. So we're going to be playing more of a mid-range deck and we're going to rely on Thresh to go along with Ash to have the power to uh, help us get some wins. Whole bunch of Fury of the Norths helping out our combat. But then we can also play some good defense. We have like the box in here and uh, some good removal spells. Definitely have a ton of Frostbite. Ice Veil Archer, Brittle Steel, Flash Freeze, and Harsh Winds. Um, uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll kind of see how this, this goes. Um, I'm, you know, I'm worried that we don't have enough power at the top end without the Harrowings, but we'll see. We have Rekindlers, which are awesome. Um, we're, we're really going to be relying on Thresh, so we're going to be trying to get this Thresh to level up, and once it levels up, you know, it'll be attacking and putting Ash into play for us. Um, and that's what we got. So let's, let's give this one a try. Uh, we'll play it on over in Ranked. See how we do. We're definitely playing a, a more mid-range version of the Ash Harrowing with just Ash Thresh here. All right, playing against They Who Endure. We don't have too many ways to put to get multiple Ash in play. We just have Rekindler. So Lee Sejuani not playing Callista, which is interesting. Um, Ice Veil Archer is very good against a Lee, so I guess I'll keep it. It's not good against all the small stuff that they have, because with the one health, like these kind of cards, Hapless Aristocrat, makes Ice Veil Archer look really bad. But it is good against a Lee. Kind of feel like I would prefer having. Um, I feel like I would prefer having Averroes and Sentry, but instead of Ice Veil Archer, but it does block here, at least. Nothing escapes my watch. Oh, what's that noise? In Averroes' name. Back. And just saving the vial fees for now. These things aren't wonderful to remove. You can see the Demastian border from here. Could have used you last turn, Ash. Just give me something to do with that four mana that I didn't of spend. You would. Our strength is yours. Yeah, Diana looks pretty good. Diana feels very similar to Lucian, to me, power level wise and everything. You know, it's two mana, two two quick attack instead of a three two quick attack. But Diana's probably going to have like better abilities normally. Obviously, Lucian has the super high upside of you know being the double attack and getting you extra attack steps. Um, there are comparable cards, I think, in power level and. You know, Lucian's definitely a good card. I feel like Diana's going to be that also. Faster than my arrow? I think not. Oh yeah, Nightfall is definitely going to be competitive. So is Daybreak. Bow to no one. Both of those certainly look competitive. Um. A true Falyorian welcome. And 
and defend. All about standing. I don't think I can block with Ash. I don't think I can risk it. Ouch. Well fought. Yeah, the daybreak and the nightfall stuff just in general. Both of those look look really good. They they both look um, like some of the best stuff that we have. I do like Trundle a lot also, the troll from the new set. Yeah, this would be a great time to have the box available. The box is so awkward. That egg. How you can only play at the time, you know, whenever they have... Whenever they play all their their things, it's like the only time you get to play the box. You know, you don't get to... Play the, you don't get to play this card when you want to. Or when you need to. Yeah, I can keep them from blocking and attack for 15, but they're at 20. And so that doesn't seem like anything too too great to do. Um Swiftly now. Just gonna do this. Yeah, these Blumps Beyonds have been awesome. Giving them so many cards. Because this play you know, allows me to have the box available. Passing the box would have just killed the two one. Carved from the savage cold. Is that four out of five? This is rough. So yes, this my opponent can have a whole lot of things that just blow this up and I lose. But I think this is my best chance of, of actually winning the game is going with this. Keeping all of my units to try to have an alpha strike. I don't think I have a better option, honestly. Obviously, yeah, Fury of the North, Atrocities, all that kind of stuff would be... Wait, what? Oh, that levels up to one. The winter's claw Unify the tribes. And we're at two, but we don't have any chance of winning now with Ash gone.
Alright, so far I... I definitely feel like our deck isn't powerful enough. But, you know, it's a donation deck. I want to play it as is. This was a viewer submitted deck. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm really worried our deck just does, you know doesn't have the card advantage it needs, doesn't have the way to win games, the finishing power that it needs. Um, and the box looked really clunky. Fury of the North uh, looks kind of clunky also. I guess that's a good word for it. All right, definitely keeping my champions. Hapless Aristocrat is something we can play on turn one. But I also don't think it's any good. Like, what can it possibly do? It can do, like, one point of damage to them and put them to 19, and then they then they play, you know, like, their two mana 1-4, and it doesn't do a single thing again. You know, it's 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 an okay blocker against aggro decks, but like this matchup, I just don't I don't see a one-one mattering. I mean, we got it, so we're gonna we're gonna play it again. We'll see if it, if it does anything, but I feel like it's gonna do you know one damage and that's it, and it won't do anything the rest of the game. And obviously for a card, you don't want your cards to just do one point of damage and then nothing. I guess we gotta block this thing. It's already doing better than I thought it would. has done one point of damage so far. That's a good draw. <clears throat> that was a good draw. got every <clears throat> every thresh which I'm not mad at I did say that we were going to be relying on a thresh Three jettisons. I do have vengeance for Nautilus. That could be big. Okay. Their plan is play Nautilus here. We do have the vengeance. Hmm. 
GG's. How do we do 19 damage to anybody? Seems like that's going to be really difficult to do. Yeah, just 20 damage total. I guess, I mean... So I can trade Avros and Hearthguard plus Fury of the North for this Terror of the Tides. Oh, that doesn't trade? Man, I cannot math. I was thinking that was going to trade. I was thinking that was going to be 8. Oh, I was just adding 5 again. Well, that's a problem. This is our homeland. Yeah, that's a big problem. Yeah, I, know, I knew at the minus 2, I was still thinking it was going to be going to 8. Big problem. Okay, cool. They still traded. Happy with that. So they have nothing left to toss, but they have not played Nautilus yet. So Nautilus will refill their library and get them more cards. Definitely can't kill them in four cards. I just I just can't even do 19 damage in two turns. It's not possible. I don't know. We'll tr we'll try one more, but I I honestly don't know if this deck works at all. I don't I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you're right, Say Mo. Like this deck needs harrowing. We need more power and more card advantage. These cards like the Box and Fury of the North and stuff like that just aren't aren't really doing anything. Could use like Avros and Sentries to draw cards, Babbling Bjergs. Um, you know, just. All that kind of stuff. I wish the person that donated for this deck was here and, and you know, would, you know, it's because then if they're here, I can, you know, it's easier to change stuff whenever they're here. They they donated for it last Saturday, and, and they said play it this Saturday in the third slot, but yet yeah, they're still not here. Yeah, you, I mean, no, you never kill three. Yeah, the box, yeah, I don't, I don't like the box either. It's... Um, really difficult to pull off, for sure. Um. I, 
I don't really like this card being just a 3-1. Because one health dies too easily. Like that. Basically, I think this card's a lot worse than Avaros and Sentry. It was good against... The Sicefell Archer was good against Elise. I think that's like the one card it's good against. But if we're not playing Culling Strike, <coughs> we don't need to be playing this card. Good. Burn a Leviathan, that's good. I shouldn't have a way to kill Thresh with just the four mana. Never lost a fair game. Or played one. Dead in their trap. So we should be able to have Fury of the North help protect Thresh for a future turn. I have one removal spell. I can have like the Valfies kill the deckhand. I did just draw a new Thresh. I'm gonna just let this one die. And play the new one. Instead of Fury of the North to protect that one there, I'll keep this one back at the 6 health that's not damaged. And then still have Fury protect this one. Because the other one was still at 0 out of 6 anyway, as far as level up. So that's four things dying. Four out of six. No Leviathan next turn. It's the card that I want to kill with Vengeance the most. Um... Get this hearth guard and play as early as possible to pump up things in our deck as early as possible. Today we fight as one. Like a world. Hopefully, with the Fury of the North, it's enough protection for Thresh. Mana. A chill in the air. All right, so obviously Riptide Rex here. Um, this spreads out the damage a little bit. That's another thing they can kill. And I still have both Fear of the Norths available. I 
should probably be frostbiting this thing. play Babbling Bjerg instead of saving the Hearth Guard, but we have noticed that we don't have very many units. Oh, I forgot this thing is going to start stunning me. They're stunning all of my things. Oh no, I need to play the Babbling Bjerg. I'm not going to have blockers because of this thing. And... Right. Because that stun. I'm going to play Bjerg instead of... I don't know. I don't know about this one. All right, so basically, okay. So cards that I don't think are any good. Hapless Aristocrat, Icefail Archer, The Box, probably Fury of the North also. Um, but those those cards are definitely should not be played. Probably Withering Whale too. And it's too much Frostbite cards also. Um, So what could we do? So if we could have, you know, I don't want to just play just the Ash Harrowing deck that we just played yesterday. So if we kind of make, I mean, we do need to play Harrowings, but if we play something that's a little different, maybe. Another Babbling Beer in here. Um... How can we make a... Another deck. You know, what, what can we do to this deck to improve it? Basically, we need we need things that, that generate cards for us. I know Avaros and Trapper doesn't necessarily generate cards, but... Um, but we need, like, Sentry, but we need something on turn three. I mean, you could play... We could play the Rhyming Wolf instead of Trapper. Um, okay, so that gets us 41. Then let's get rid of a... Oh man, the Vile Feasts have just been awful. Let's get rid of those two. That card's not any good. Yeah, Tavern Keeper is great in the aggro meta. Don't really need it these days. It gives us 20 units. Need another two or three drop. Play one Ice Veil Archer. Play an Entreat. Play another Glimpse Beyond. Play some Omen Hawks, a Bark Beast, Elixir of Iron. Yes. Why? Why do we never play Elixir of Iron? Always use more Elixir of Irons. Yeah, less Fury of the North, more Elixir of Iron. All 
All right, yeah, we'll get another glimpse in here. And then a mist call. Now get another chronicler back in here. Okay. Let's try this. See, so, you know, like, Avros and Sentry will draw us cards. Elixir of Iron will help protect our stuff for a lot cheaper. Ryan Thing Wolf is just perfect with Ash, comparing, uh, you know, combining those and also great with these Frostbite cards. Get another Glimpse Beyond in here to draw some more cards. Get another Babbling Bjerg in here. Because we need to be able to play a later game and we need to have some power. And so that, then we'll put in a couple of Harrowings as well. Let's try this. We'll see how it does here with um, Ash and Thresh together. Hopefully have a little bit more power. Um, Chronicler of Ruin is for... Okay, this isn't bad. I don't know if I need a glimpse beyond against a deck that doesn't really isn't really playing removal. Um perfect. Love those two together. So sorry, so Chronicler of Ruin can do a few things. Like um it you can kill Ash with Chronicler of Ruin and bring it back and then rekindle it or can put Ash into play. That's something you can do. Um, but anyway, but besides that, for our deck, we have something like Avros and Sentry, which is awesome. Rekindler is like the best card to Chronicler of Ruin. Um, but Avros and Sentry here, or, um, or Avros and Hearthguard. Those are both very good. Babbling Beard will draw you another card. That's another good one. So I can, I can block with the Rhymefang Wolf and then use one of these two to uh, protect Rhymefang Wolf. But I'm not going to do that because next, because I want to play Ash Challenge and I want, I want this extra spell mana right here with the Ash to be able to use these Elixir of Iron or Brittle Steel depending on which one we need. Swiftly now. All right, so looks like we're challenging this thing. Search that. Okay, didn't need either one right now, but, you know, we'll still be able to use that later. Yeah, I don't know. Our our deck just didn't work before. The the deck that we had donated, just, it just didn't work before. So I think this should help. This should all just work better. I'm pretty sure we can go to six. Playing the sentries first, but we'll just go right like this. Um, so if I let Ash die, then All right, we're gonna do this. We're gonna let Ash die we're... so we can level up Thresh. We have a new Ash over here. So obviously I could protect that one, but. 
It's nice keeping this elixir of iron to protect this thrash. Also. Been a long path to get here. Faster than my arrow? I think not. Cool, no single combat. I was kind of scared of single combat right there. These old eyes still see far and clear. Don't hold back. Eat up, friend. The time is right. Strike now. Yeah, this this could just come back and bite me for sure. Maybe I should have just done that on the war shafts and blocked the war shafts and just had my seven seven just trade here. That that's what I should have done. That was playing too fast. That's what I should have done, is just blocked this thing with that. So if I go like this, then if they have a post I lose. I don't really want to just lose to repost. Leave the target. Okay, probably probably worked out. Looking like it worked out. Yay. Yeah, I don't know. Like, their hand's probably a bunch of Relentless Pursuits. That card that I keep telling people not to play, but everybody still plays that. I think that's why people don't do well with Demacios, because they play the card Relentless Pursuit. That's my that's my working theory, is that how people say that Demacia is not bad, or Demacia is bad, I think all of those people that say Demacia is bad play Relentless Pursuit in every Demacia deck. That's my working theory. Not sure if that you know if that theory is is true or not. That's <laughs> that's my working theory. All right, def our deck definitely performed better though. Elixir of Iron was awesome. Um, you know, Sentry got to trade, draw us hard. Definitely looked better. Hey, thank you so much, uh, Japanese Airlines, for the cheers. Thank you so much. Okay, we're going to keep the Rhymefang Wolf. Do I even want to keep Rhymefang Wolf against Ezreal Teemo? Um, let's keep Grasp the Undying. Basically, I'm not keeping the Rhymefang Wolf because it has two health for three mana. So very easy to remove. And looking for cards like this. I love Avaros and Sentry. You remove that, it you know, draws me a card. Safeguard our homes. So that one's perfect. Don't blink, or you'll miss me. Sounds dangerous. I'm in. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. That didn't really. I'm at 19. All right, we'll draw three. Light the signal fires. They're out there. I'll spot them. All right, draw another one. Next turn, I can use Grasp the Undying on Ezreal. Mm. 
Okay. It's not bragging if you can back it up. It could be the kind of thing of like maybe I should just be like brittle stealing all the time and let their Ezreal stay alive because they want it to die so they can bring it back with Harrowing and Rekindler and that kind of stuff. It's possible. Alright, get him, Thresh. One out of six. Let's make that two out of six. take my whole turn to cast Vengeance right now, so I'm just going to Brittle Steal this thing for this turn. And then... So I definitely want to keep these Elixir of Irons available. I'm going to play Ash. I will unite the Frail Yord. Yeah, the, our, our four mana 3-3 three, three, draw one, at least it draws something very specific, right? It's drawing, it's helping me find a card that we need. Ezreal's about to level up. Glad they're doing that, bef you know, before Ezreal is leveled up. Basically, this is Ezreal's at seven out of eight, so Ezreal's about to turn into a two four. They don't know what they're up against. Well, that's too bad. Definitely did not want to see that one. I guess I didn't really think of that. Of I should just battle fury the thresh. No, that's that's true. You're right, Samoa. That's what I should have done and then saved vengeance. You're right. Look up for reavers. Yeah, you're right. That that should have been my play.
Yeah, yeah. I don't. I just. I didn't really think of Fury of the North. But I was just focused on using Fury of the North to protect Ash at the time. I just didn't really even consider that. That should have been my play, and then save vengeance. Why? All the world on one arrow. Sure. Like a harsh winds here. Harsh Winds probably doesn't even work. Alright, this lets me keep Fury of the North available. One candle for every sun. That's better, because I, I need all that power in play also. I wish I had one more mana and kind of Fury and Elixir of Iron. You know, I wish I could have that little extra bit of protection with the Elixir of Iron also. Yeah, we've killed two Ezreals. They've had... They have two more. Oh, that hurts. Well, that one's going to hurt. Now Ash doesn't level up. Such naive they get to block. Alright, well, if I would have cast Fury of the North the first time, then I could have Vengeance for the second Ezreal. Um, they still would have had more Ezreals. I don't know if that would have been a win. Probably not, but that's what I should have done. Anyway, I uh, for the person that donated this deck, I would recommend uh, switching over to something more like this. I think you just have better quality cards that are going to... Uh, they're going to allow you to play a later game um, and should be more effective. Um, didn't get to... I guess we got to attack with a leveled up Thresh once. And that was in that, that game that we won. I could have attacked with it that other time, but then you know, I needed, you know, wanted to play that Rekindler first to try to get to three Ash in play. All right, but there we go. That's Ash Thresh. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and and it, you know, feel free to leave some comments if you know anything anything about this kind of build um, that you think that we're missing. You know, anything that uh, you're having success with in this kind of deck with Ash and Thresh. You know, any kind of cards or um, you know anything like that. Free to leave those comments as well. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.